Hello, Roy William Maega are my names, and I'm from the Department of Epidemiology and Biostatistics at Makerere University School of Public Health. Uh, my co-author is Roda Nakiriva from the Department of Pediatrics and Child Health in Makerere University. And I'm presenting uh, a study on behalf uh, of co-investigators uh, on the prevalence and the factors associated with dysglycemia, which is abnormal glucose regulation, among girls in selected boarding secondary schools in Wakiso district, a peri-urban district uh, in central um, Uganda. By way of background, there is a limited information on dysglycemia in adolescents in low-income countries, and most of the available studies are from higher-income settings. And yet we know that uh, as uh, diabetes and non-communicable diseases increase in this setting, uh, adolescents are the next group uh, in which we are likely to see an increase in the risk factors and the trends uh, related to the metabolic syndrome. Our objective, therefore, was to determine the prevalence and the factors associated with dysglycemia among boarding secondary school girls in peri-urban uh, settings here in Uganda. The design of this study was a cross-sectional survey. Uh, we sampled 688 adolescents from four randomly selected girls-only boarding secondary schools in Wakiso district in Uganda. The four schools represented a social demographic gradient with one school uh, being very affluent uh, and the other schools being in the middle and another school that was uh, of low affluence determined on the basis of the tuition that the students paid. Fasting plasma glucose was determined for each girl as was uh, their body mass index uh, and their blood pressure. In addition, a questionnaire was used to assess demographic and lifestyle factors uh, related to non-communicable diseases in the girls. Suspected dysglycemia was defined using the American Diabetes Association cutoffs of fasting plasma glucose, which is greater than or equal to 5.6 millimoles per liter. Overweight and hypertension were defined uh, uh, as being above two standard deviations or the 95th percentile of the World Health Organization BMI uh, for age and blood pressure for age reference charts uh, respectively. Logistic regression was then used to determine the factors independently associated with dysglycemia uh, and hypothesis tested at 95% confidence. And these were the key findings from this assessment. The mean age of the girls that were uh, recruited in this study was 15.4 years, uh, with a standard deviation of 1.7 years and an age range of 11 for the youngest and 18 years for the oldest girl. Probable dysglycemia was found in 44 out of 688 girls, which was a prevalence of 6.4%. Uh, the prevalence ranged from 3.5% in the least affluent school among the four schools studied <coughs> to 9.8% in the most affluent school. So the distribution was not homogeneous, but it was higher, clearly higher, in the more affluent schools and less in the less affluent schools. No case of type 2 diabetes was found. It should be noted. So all the cases of dysglycemia were in the pre-diabetes classification. In addition, we found that 11.6% of the girls had probable high blood pressure or hypertension. Regarding the factors associated with dysglycemia, we found that dysglycemia was higher in adolescents who were overweight with an adjusted odds ratio of 2.3, those with hypertension with an adjusted odds ratio of 4.0, and those who frequently stocked highly refined pastries, especially biscuits, as an indicator, an adjusted odds ratio of 3.0. Conversely, 
Dysglycemia was significantly lower in the older adolescents. So there was a shift. Uh, it was higher in the younger adolescents and lower in the older adolescents, which could be related to the physiological processes happening as these young people transition through uh, adolescence. It was also lower in those who habitually took water as the preferred uh, uh, or most accessible accompaniment with meals compared to those who took concentrates uh, and uh, with uh, an adjusted odds ratio of 0 0.3. We concluded, therefore, that in these predominantly peri-urban boarding secondary schools, 6.4% of adolescent girls have probable dysglycemia. It means, therefore, that the prevalence of dysglycemia, in this case prediabetes, is quite substantial in these peri-urban secondary schools and could point to uh, an, a, a likelihood of increased occurrence of type 2 diabetes as these uh, young girls uh, transition to the older age group. The implications of these findings are that as Africa undergoes the epidemiological transition, there is need for closer surveillance for diabetes and hypertension and indeed associated risk factors in peri-urban schools. Peri-urban schools should be prioritized. In addition, there is need for school health programs to be rolled out uh, in schools, especially boarding secondary schools, uh, to increase uh, their responsiveness to diet and physical activity, regularizing these into the usual school curricula and counseling uh, young people on healthy feeding habits so as to build a healthier generation uh, relatively insulated from the increasing burden of type 2 diabetes. Thank you very much. Uh, our other co-authors are Teresa Piloya, Nicolette Nabukera Barungi, and Richard Idro, all from the Department of Pediatrics and Child Health at Makerere University School of Public Health, uh, of Makerere University College of Health Sciences.